What's up, I'm Ijema and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I want to talk about the difference between authentication and authorization. And then once we understand that difference, we can look at how the Evo API implements its own auth solution. For the longest time, I thought authorization and authentication were one and the same. I would use them interchangeably in multiple different situations. Whenever someone said auth, I thought maybe they're talking about authorization or maybe they're talking about authentication. It doesn't matter because they mean the same thing. But it turns out that these two terms mean two separate things, so we're going to understand how they differ. We can start off with authentication, which is the process of determining a user's identity. This is usually the step when an application might get a request from a user and it's the application's job to figure out if the user is a valid user in its system. So with authentication, you've probably heard of single factor or two factor authentication, which involves a number of steps that are involved to actually authenticate a user. To keep this video simple, I'm not going to go into detail about these different auth methods, but I can leave some resources down in the description box below if you want to read more. So a typical authentication process is if a user provides their email and password and sends it over to the backend, it's the backend's job to authenticate that user to figure out whether that user is a valid user in its system. And if it is, then it grants access to the rest of the application to that user. Authorization, on the other hand, is kind of the step that happens after authenticating a user. Authorization is a process of figuring out what level of access or permission should be granted to a specific user. So for example, let's say that you have an application where you have admins, editors, and regular users. You probably don't want users to have access to what admins have, and the same thing with whatever users have access to, you probably don't want every single editor to have access to. So whenever an application has different roles and different areas that certain users can have access to, you probably want to authorize a specific user to know whether you can serve a specific part of that platform to that user. So these two concepts are typically super coupled because if you have authentication, then you probably want authorization. And if you have authorization, you probably have authentication. So it's super clear why people like myself have conflated these two terms for the longest time. So now that we know the difference between authentication and authorization, we can see how it's implemented within the Evo API. So here we're inside of server.js, that's inside of the Evo API projects. And you can see on line 75, 80, and 85, we have a couple of app use routes. If we look closer at one of these routes, we can see that we're passing in the authentication and authorization middleware for this project. So the idea behind these routes is that if a user makes a request to API v1, they have to go through the authentication and then our authorization middlewares before they hit our respective routers. So if a problem happens at either step of authentication or authorization, then we're going to immediately return back to the user an error occurred and not granting them access to the editor router, admin router, or even our test router. We can take a closer look at what this looks like by first looking at the authentication middleware. So authentication is a function that takes in three arguments, which are rec, res, and next. And then all the logic that's present inside of this function is wrapped inside of a try catch block, just to make sure that if any error occurs, at the very least, we can return back a 400 error. So the first thing that we want to do is get our auth header that lives on our request object. And after we get our auth header, we want to make a couple of checks. The first check that we make is to see if we're inside of a testing environment. If we're inside of a testing environment, we probably just want to automatically inject the role to be an admin and assign its UID to the admin auth token. So the reason why we do this is so that we can automatically assign the role of a user to be admin for all of our tests. And then once we're done with that, we can call our next function, which is going to take us to our next middleware, which is authorization. That's for testing, but we can see how it actually works for production ready code. So we first want to check to see if auth header exists. If it doesn't, then we're going to return back an error saying that no header was provided. Then what we want to do is split up our auth header because we always prefix our auth headers with bear. So we want to get just the token that's associated with bear. Once we have token, we want to make a quick check to see if we're again in a testing environment or in a production environment. So for the sake of this video, we're going to just focus on what happens inside of a production or even a development environment. This project uses Firebase for any authentication solution. So whenever we want to decode or parse through any token that's provided from a client, we're going to be using Firebase modules. So here we can see we have our admin object that comes from Firebase admin. Then we call the auth function. And then after calling that function, we want to verify the ID token that we got from the client. After waiting for that to be completed, we get a decoded object, which has a role and a UID that lives on it. The role is a user role and the UID is a user ID that we want to save for our authorization step. So we create a new object that has a role and UID and we place it on our request objects user object. 
If all goes well in this step, then we're going to call the next function, which is going to take us from this middleware to our next middleware, which is authorization. So the idea behind this file is that given a token from the client side, we want to see if that token is associated with a valid user inside of Firebase. If we find a user inside of Firebase, we know that the token is valid and we can move to the next step of authorization. If we go back in server.js, you can see that our authorization function takes in an array of different roles. The roles that are listed here are considered permitted roles, and these are the roles that are necessary in order to have access to the following router. So you can see here that the roles for this line are editor, merger, and admin. So if a user has any of these roles, then they have access to go to editor router. For this line right here, we have an admin router, so the only role that's permitted is an admin. And again, for our test router, we allow the different roles of editor, merger, and admin. Let's take a closer look at what authorization looks like. So inside of authorization.js, we have a function that takes in permitted roles, which is the array of roles that we specify. This function, once called, is going to return another function, which takes in the arguments, rec, res, and next. Inside of our second function, we want to grab our user object that lives on our request body. Inside of the second function, we want to grab our user object that lives on rec. So going back to authentication.js, you can see here that we put a user object on our rec object that has the role and UID for our user. So now that we have our user object, we want to see if the user's role is permitted. So first thing we want to do is check to see if the user object exists. And if it does, we want to see if the user role is inside of our permitted roles array. We also have an implicit check to see if a user's role is admin, then we always allow it to go to the next step. But if the user's role can't be found inside of permitted roles or it's not even an admin, then we're going to return back a 403 saying unauthorized invalid user permissions. So the authorization step is a little bit more simple where once we have a user object, we just want to see if the user's role is a valid or permitted role. So for routes that have sensitive data or perform sensitive actions, we always want to hide them behind an authentication and authorization step. So that's the idea behind authentication and authorization, often used interchangeably, but they mean two different things and they have two very different purposes. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I'm happy to answer any of them. That's it for authentication and authorization. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can send me a DM on Twitter and I'll be happy to answer the questions there. If you want to contribute to the Ebo API, I have a link down in the description box below and you can open up an issue, create a PR, do anything you want to do to contribute to the project. And with that, I'll see y'all in the next one.